Okay. All right. So uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm Giuseppe Riccardi, and Dean of Undergrad and Graduate Studies at the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science. And I'm very really excited to today. It's like a recurrent event every year. We meet our students and also hopefully we have students from other universities um, to present our incredible offer. I say incredible meaning that it should be credible. And uh, we have lined up the uh, program director to tell you how exciting it is. Uh, we have a brand new master program. We also have interdepartmental uh, master program. Um, so uh, the way it's going to work is that uh, master director will present succinctly, of course, uh, the master program. Then we'll have a testimonial from students that left some time ago and will tell you about the experience and what, uh, uh, what was beautiful, successful, or how life has changed for them. And then uh, you can ask questions in the uh, chat and somebody will be collecting those questions and at the end we'll, uh, uh, we'll answer those questions. Uh, so please uh, don't worry if we don't take the questions on the fly because we just wanna make sure that uh, uh, we, 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 we stay in the time and then at the end, uh, approximately in an hour, uh, we will have a Q and A and we'll take the questions you ask in the chat or some other questions you may have on the fly and then test those. So I will leave the floor for uh, the first presentation from Professor Elisa Ricci from the European Institute of Technology Digital Master School, and then uh, we'll move on. So enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Elisa, please. Hi, let me share my screen. I guess you can see my presentation, right? Yeah. Okay, so my name is Elisa Ricci and I am the coordinator at University of Trento of the EIT Digital Master School. So um, let me briefly introduce you what is uh, EIT. EIT stays for European Institute of Technology. This is an, an initiative of the European Commission to bring together uh, higher education institution, research labs and uh, uh, high tech companies to create cross-border cross partnerships. These partnerships are called knowledge and innovation communities. And uh, our focus for EIT Digital is uh, to have activities in information and communication technologies. The EIT Digital carries out several activities, not just education, uh, activities, but here we are interested to one specific activity, and this is uh, the EIT Digital Master Program. This is a, a double degree master program uh, between uh, two different universities of the EIT Digital Consortium. The EIT Digital Consortium is composed by 16 top universities in Europe. Uh, in Italy, we have uh, only University of Trento and Politecnico uh, uh, di Milano. And uh, this is a, a double degree master program uh, for two years. That means that you have the possibility to stay the first year in one university and the second year in another university of the consortium. So uh, this is a very different uh, uh, master school program uh, that encourage uh, European mobility. As I said before, first year in one university, this is called the entry year, and then a second year in a second university. Uh, this is the exit. Uh, of course, uh, this is technical education, so the vast uh, majority of credits are for technical courses, but there is also uh, a lot of emphasis in innovation and entrepreneurship activities. Uh, there are also unique components. Uh, in the first year at the beginning, there is a, a kickoff meeting that is a meeting with other students uh, of uh, all the consortium uh, where the, there is the presentation of all the technical uh, uh, different master program that you can take. There are also a bunch of social events and very uh, interesting keynotes from uh, industry leaders. Uh, then, uh, 
uh, there is a, a, in between the first and the second year a summer school where the students have the possibility to uh, have hands on activities on real business uh, uh, use cases, uh, having uh, some uh, technical and business mentors. Uh, then uh, uh, in the second year, you also have an uh, internship in a company from uh, the consortium. And at the end of the, your uh, master's, you get the double degree and also the EIT digital label certificate. So all these uh, things list why EIT digital master school is different from traditional master program. Uh, Regarding the contents, there are eight main technical measures that are listed here. Uh, first one is autonomous system, then cloud and network infrastructure, cybersecurity, data science, embedded systems, fintech, and human computer interaction and design. Um, you may uh, choose one of these uh, uh, technical measures and uh, um, uh, carry out these studies into different uh, university of the consortium. Uh, regarding these technical measures, this is our offer in Trento. So we have uh, four uh, um, uh, technical measures that you can have in the first year and the rest that, uh, and many more that you can have as exit point. So for year two. Uh, uh, something that I would like to mention is that uh, there is also the possibility to enroll to EIT as a parallel entry student. So you can choose to um, uh, study the first year at University of Trento as an entry student and then think and apply later uh, to be part of the EIT digital. So this is a, another possibility that we offer. And in this okay. case, uh, the four specialization that you can uh, um, have are the four one that are listed in this slide. Uh, I have reported uh, some uh, relevant links. So if you have uh, any question, you can also directly refer uh, to me or to or you can find more information in the EIT Master School portal or send emails to the Master School office and the Master School office here at UNITM. So, uh, I'm concluding this presentation and uh, I would like to leave the floor to our first uh, testimonial. Uh, she's a student, uh, she's an ex-student, a former student from um, EIT Master School. She's called Miriam Nesser. And uh, so I would like to ask her a few questions in order uh, for you to understand a bit more uh, what is EIT Digital and what is the experience of a student. So Marian, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you please introduce yourself and say something about your personal uh, uh, path uh, into EIT Master School program? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mariam Nasir, and I am an EIT ex student from the class of 2019. I just graduated before the Corona times in December 2019, and it was a double degree program. My major was in embedded systems, and these were two really amazing years of my life, which started from a, a kickoff in University of Helsinki, Finland. And then for my first year, I went to Technical University of Berlin. And after that, uh, I had a summer school in with, uh, with the high tech campus in Eindhoven, Netherlands. And then for my second year, I came to University of Trento in Italy, where I also did my industrial master thesis with the research center for Fiat. And uh, there I developed the control algorithm for the autonomous cars. And it was a really amazing experience. And I would really like you guys to uh, apply for it because it's not only the technical program, but the EIT program also equipped with you with the innovation and entrepreneurship skills. So you can also end up in starting your own startup. And uh, nowadays, even the global companies are really looking forward to those candidates who have international mindset and who can collaborate in intercultural settings and work with dynamic environments. So this is really the thing which EIT Digital uh, equips its graduates. So just to apply. Thank you. It was very nice. And I, I have maybe a second question that is, uh, what is your current uh, activities? What's your plan for the future after your master? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, nowadays, uh, I am uh, uh, working with the Zenstech, which is a medtech startup in DPU Science Park, Denmark. And I'm responsible for their product development, and they are developing intelligent souls for Parkinson's patients who assist them in their better treatment. So I'm responsible for their sensor calibrations and digital signal processing and their algorithm designs, basically, based on the sensor information. Uh, maybe the last question, since we have a few minutes remaining. What did you find more exciting of EIT uh, during your uh, two years? <laughs> Which is the, uh, the best things that you find? <laughs> yeah. Well, apart from the really amazing uh, universities and professors and the tech techy things. Uh, the really uh, the thing that bring brought a big change in me was the rotations. And uh, it really changed me as a person and the personal development was a thing. So after a year, you have to move to another country, get used to that culture, get um, really uh, mix yourself with those people. So it really improved me as a person as well. And it gave me insight that how to collaborate people people of different setups, different thinkings, and diversity, basically. So um, it's really amazing when you interact with so many people in different cultures and know about that, how they work, how they think. So it was the most amazing part that I enjoyed in this journey. Th th thank you. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's time for me to leave the floor to the next uh, master coordinator. He's Professor Enrico Blanzieri for the Master in Computer Science. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Elisa. And so uh, I will present the uh, Master in Computer Science. And uh, let me tell you that in, uh, in the contemporary world, uh, computation is everywhere and it affects every aspect of our life. So uh, the computer scientists of the future uh, will have to adapt to intervene in many domains and application areas and keep it with a broad range of knowledge and skills. Uh, such education challenges are met by our master. The two years long master in computer science offered by the University of Trento has flexibility as its main characteristics and consequent, consequently there is a big number of choices that the students can take. The main choice, uh, the main choice that, this, that the student faces is to decide which curriculum to undertake among the two that are available, computer science and technology and ICT innovation. The two curricula differ for the mandatory courses. On the one hand, compu computability, complexity, a choice among technical relevant subjects uh, like machine learning, distributed system and service engineering and, uh, and an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary choice of other engineering subjects. On the other hand, the emphasis is on innovation, entrepreneurship, competence and skills. The two curricula reflects two different expectations the society has towards the informatician of the future. Roughly speaking, and just for giving an example, on the on one hand, the person who is technically, scientifically savvy and competent, and is projected to work in an organization or in a tech company. On the other hand, for instance, the person who aims to lead in the innovation processes, contributing to establishing fresh new initiatives, such as startups, spin-offs, or giving cutting edge consultants. The two curricula share the same constraint on, on the credits for internship, thesis, and additional elective courses. Both the curricula has a rather relevant number of specialization areas, respectively five and five and a half, uh, given many choice to the student. In the case of the curriculum of science and technology, one area is uh, chosen with 18 credits with the area, and the other 18 credits have to be chosen in the other areas. In the curriculum in ICT innovation, the, speci the specialization areas are defined for the world 36 credits. Which are the area of each curriculum? Let us start analyzing the area of science and technology. In this case, we have the area software and service architecture with the, these courses, um, system and networks. And these are the courses that one can choice, can choose data science, bioinformatics and computational foundation. In the case of the curriculum in ICT innovation, we find again software and service architecture and software and service architecture is the only area that does not correspond to any EIT master. Whereas the other areas, as Elisa said before, 
uh, are uh, connected to the EIT digital initiative. Uh, the area, in this case, can provide uh, both an exit and an entry point. This is a case of cybersecurity and uh, uh, financial technology, both areas that do not have a natural correspondence on the other curriculum. So who wants to become an expert in security or in fintech have an opportunity just here. Other areas provide the EIT exit point only. Embedded systems and data science can also be attended by any student in both first and second year, uh, uh, independent from the fact that he's enrolled in the EIT digital or not. Uh, finally, in the case of human computer interaction and design, only the second year is available as an EIT exit point only. Uh, however, it is worth noting that it's possible, as Elisa said, in general, to enroll in the entry point in another university. Concluding, we have presented the structure of the two curricula of the Master in Computer Science. Uh, the details are obviously available on the site and the manifesto. And now it's time to introduce our guest and testimonial, David. Pedranza. So, David, is uh, your turn. Stop. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Oops. Can you also see my screen? I hope so. Uh, thank you, Professor, for introducing for the introduction. Um, so, okay, it's not working. Hopefully, okay, now it works. Um, so a few words about me. Uh, right now, uh, I am a software engineer at Bending Spoons. Uh, I used to study at the uh, University of Trento, so I followed the masters in uh, computer science. Um, and I also was a, a software developer at FBK, which is uh, from the Federal Castle, really close to the university. You probably know about that. Uh, here are my contacts in case you get questions uh, after the presentations. So otherwise, we have the uh, question, and answers in, question and answering at the end. Uh, so Professor Blanteri asked me uh, to answer a few questions. So uh, first one is uh, my path inside the uh, during the university. Uh, so I took the uh, bachelor's in computer science at the University of Trento, uh, and then I continued with the master's in computer science here at the uh, University of Trento. Uh, during the uh, my studies, uh, I did uh, I participated into two Erasmus programs. Uh, the first one in uh, uh, Aachen, Germany. Uh, the second one in uh, Groningen in the Netherlands, uh, which were a really amazing experience. And here uh, in the master's uh, in computer science, I took the curricula uh, science and technology specialization area in data science. But in practice, I ended up, uh, uh, I, I got in love with distributed systems. So I moved to distributed systems for the thesis. Um, and also during the uh, university worked as a part-time uh, software developer at FPK. Uh, so getting a little bit uh, more concrete about what I'm doing right now. So after the university, I graduated a couple of years ago. Um, while working on my thesis, I found this flyer uh, about an event called Force Ascent. It was really catchy. The, the flyer was black and there was written only, are you a top tech student? Um, I was curious about this event. Uh, you could win a, a weekend in Copenhagen, uh, full expenses paid. Uh, so I decided to apply. And during the application, I got in touch with the founder of this company where I'm working on, which is Manning Spoons, and told me about a little bit the, um, the story of the company and the values. So I decided it was uh, to give it, giving it a try. Uh, I sent the application and now I'm working there. Um, just to give you a few uh, information about the company. So it's an Italian company based in Milan. Uh, we are the main publisher of iOS applications in Europe and among the top 10, 15 in the world. Uh, we recently started also our journey on, on Android, uh, but we are not as big as uh, iOS there. Uh, we got famous recently in Italy for uh, um, Immuni, which is the contact tracing app for COVID-19. Hopefully it will be uh, over soon. Um, but yeah, usually we, uh, we don't work for third parties. We are a product company. Uh, we build our own products. So my path there started as a software engineer in the, working on the backend area in a team called Marketing Tech, which was responsible for supporting our um, basically marketing effort on the technological side. Uh, after seven months, I moved to uh, a new position, which is Tech Lead. 
Uh, it's a mix between technological and the management managerial um, role. Uh, I was responsible for following the team, so I did a lot of code reviews, uh, design, uh, following the training of new people and stuff like that. I was also participating in a kind of committee uh, for taking uh, uh, strategic uh, technological decisions with other tech leads and the CTO. Uh, currently, I moved to yet another role, um, which I don't really know the name, so let's say head of the can. Uh, what I do now is uh, working with other tech leads in uh, uh, different teams in the backend area and also with the CTO to make sure everything goes smooth, um, follow strategic projects and plan the new ones. And finally, uh, why should you do a, a master in computer science? Um, so this answer won't be complete, obviously. Here are a few things I found super useful from my masters. Uh, the first one is this distributed systems. So distributed systems are getting everywhere in principle. Um, companies are moving to uh, microservice architectures for both scaling performances and organizations. Uh, with cloud providers, it is super easy to get computational resources. So you can uh, go to your cloud provider and tell, uh, uh, give me 1,000 machines with uh, four CPUs and some gigabytes of RAM, and you get an amazing computation power there. A um, few examples, uh, we are using GashiCorp Vault, uh, which uh, um, uses uh, Raft for distributed consensus, which is something you can learn about in Distributed Systems 2 uh, at the University of Trento, or databases. Basically, every database uh, has some uh, isolation model, and you as a developer need to know about them to take advantage of uh, uh, fully exploit the database. Um, data science. Companies are collecting more and more data with uh, well, hardware is super easy, super accessible now with from cloud providers. With even just super simple algorithms, you can really build amazing features. Uh, something we do every time. Every time. We, 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 yeah, we need to sorry. we need to wrap up. Yeah. So just, um, just say a conclusion a conclusion sentence because we need to pass the end to the other presenters. So. Uh, I can recommend the masters. Uh, I learned a lot of interesting things that you use in practice every day. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much, Davide. And now it's the turn of Professor Nicola Conci. Right. Hello, can you hear me? Right, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Nicola Conci and I'm the coordinator of the master's degree in uh, information and communication engineering. So you can contact me at this uh, email address for any additional question you might have. So uh, the master is arranged basically into three tracks, uh, one in signal processing and understanding. Here the goal is to go through uh, the advanced uh, signal processing in different uh, domains of analysis, uh, in different uh, uh, type of data that you can uh, face while going, let's say, outside in the real world. Then there is a track in wireless communications uh, where you will be uh, looking into the networks, uh, the architectures, and the system that can convey information. Plus, uh, we have the ICT innovation track, which is uh, somehow also linked to the EIT area that uh, Professor Rich was explaining uh, uh, a bit before. Uh, so the trucks are arranged into mandatory courses. Uh, you can see them down, uh, let's say, on the on the bottom left of the slides. Uh, these include some basic uh, um, courses, uh, let's say, for the world of uh, for, for an engineer, uh, which means like signal processing, uh, recognition systems, inverse problems, uh, and innovation to give you also flavor about uh, how business can work. Uh, so how can you can develop and say develop your skills in business in ICT. Plus, there's a large variety of elective and specialization courses, uh, and you can complement your studies with the thesis and internships. So, uh, some recent figures about uh, our course: uh, um, we have been uh, like uh, growing up uh, in the past years. Uh, before, we used to be, we used to be a degree in, uh, in telecommunication engineering, and then uh, we switched into adding some uh, information and communication engineering flavor. Most of the students are from uh, Trento, about 6%, plus a large, a good variety of uh, foreign and uh, let's say students and uh, coming from out of Trento. And we have also good records uh, 
in, uh, in teaching and employment related work of research among the, among the figures, uh, about 96% of the students uh, can get a position uh, within three years after graduation. So what we're looking for are young and talented enthusiasts with the ability to think out of the box, uh, willing to take uh, challenges, let's say, posed by this kind of uh, uh, dynamic and uh, dynamic domain of, uh, um, of the engineering in innovative fashion. And so, in fact, uh, there's a large, uh, as I mentioned before, variety of specialization and courses. Uh, and so I will uh, uh, briefly go through some of the domains uh, because uh, by the time you will be attending these courses, you will have the chance uh, to touch uh, hands-on equipment, uh, make experiments uh, and uh, learn, uh, let's say, uh, hands-on on, on, on the tools uh, and uh, the algorithms that uh, we uh, play with in our areas. Uh, so this can be like include like uh, image processing, recognition, computer vision, but spanning also digital forensics for the analysis of media, understanding where they come from, uh, understand whether the contents are real or fake. And uh, also we have like uh, a lot of research going on uh, in the aerospace and remote sensing. Here the goal is to understand the world from a, uh, from a higher uh, level in, 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 in uh, literally, right? So to understand what's going on and how things uh, can uh, uh, be observed uh, and tracked and detected uh, looking from uh, above. Then we have developed uh, lately um, laboratory working on sound. We have been strongly involved uh, in this uh, area in the past uh, few months, uh, of course, uh, for the reasons that uh, all of us well, uh, well know. We have been de developing projects uh, involving students uh, and uh, master students uh, and master thesis uh, to develop uh, new algorithms and tools for uh, detecting and working uh, on the COVID. Plus, there's a networking area. This uh, takes part in the wireless uh, uh, networking uh, track. Right, the previous one was instead for the signal processing and understanding. And here you have uh, like a bunch of courses uh, devoted to cloud and fog networking infrastructures, uh, to, uh, tackling the 5Gs uh, and, uh, and beyond. And plus there are like a lot of uh, different facets uh, of the electromagnetic worlds, uh, looking uh, into, for example, smart uh, environments, uh, 6G communication and beyond, uh, emergency analysis and management, uh, imaging uh, to detect diagnose uh, artificial metamaterials uh, and also digital agriculture there's like uh, a lot of things going on also in the domain of automotive uh, uh, wired sensing and understanding and uh, just to conclude uh, we are also offering within our major uh, one of the tracks in eit this is the one uh, about cloud and networking infrastructures. This is an interdisciplinary, pro interdisciplinary program uh, in between the computer science and electrical engineering. We also are entering exit with a specialization in 5G. Or to very fancy movies, are now a reality. Autonomous driving is, level two autonomous driving is currently being offered also in medium level uh, cars, although there are some legal problems. Uh, hampers it, its takeoff, but we, we, we are in a good position. Uh, AI based diagnosis in therapy is all over, is all over. Uh, there are systems that are able to uh, say what is uh, the best therapy that has to be done given, given uh, your, your screenings. And uh, um, we can talk with our phones, we can talk with the, with the furniture of our houses, uh, and more and more we have robots that help us directly in our work. All of these are real systems that are reshaping the world, okay? And uh, if you just look at, at the number, uh, this is something which is worth as much as 4 trillion uh, euros every year. And uh, even in, in this COVID era, uh, the, the, the number of jobs that are being uh, created uh, uh, is much larger than the one that are uh, displaced because, because of the introduction of this very high level of innovation. So our uh, intent ever, ever since the beginning was, how can we make a student able to uh, perform uh, the design of this, of this system at the best? And our take has been um, to work on a quite widespread uh, number of uh, knowledges because 
um, because um, many of the most technical things can be learned, but the fundamentals are important uh, in, in a course like this. So you've got to understand what is intelligence if you want to make intelligent systems. Uh, you, you, you need to understand how we can make a system intelligence, and here comes all the classical computer science, uh, artificial intelligence uh, area. And then how can we create systems uh, out of this? So how can we make an engineering uh, activities based on artificial intelligence? And finally, one thing that is extremely important to understand is what are the ethical and legal implication of uh, creating systems like this, okay? Uh, therefore, we want to operate on all these dimensions during our study course and uh, uh, enable uh, at the end our student uh, to become a professional able to effectively develop systems like these taken from a wide part portfolio of knowledge. For my speaking, our is a course of computer engineering. We want to engineer systems. Uh, the course structure is captured in this uh, slide here, there are 48 uh, mandatory courses, then there are 12 uh, credits that can be chosen in the in-depth area, and then there are four possible specialization, intelligent robots, computer vision, systems, methodology, and AI and innovation. All, all of these um, specializations you will uh, find uh, much more uh, detailed information on the website. Uh, you will find a, a, an exhaustive list of course and also their description. In addition to that, we have another possible path, uh, which is, uh, has been developed in close col uh, collaboration with the CMAC in uh, Roberto. And this course is more on the neurocognitive aspect of, 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 of uh, computer science. So understanding cognitive psychology, computational linguistic, understanding the foundations, the, the biological foundations of human language in order to be able to support uh, this type of studies. As I said, uh, more information on all of these uh, different uh, paths can be found in our, in our website. Okay, now I will leave the floor to my testimonial is Giuliano Tortore. Please, I, I... Giuliano can take over. Okay, uh, I can share my slides, okay. Can you see my slides? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I'm Giuliano Tortoreto and um, I work um, uh, in VUI, which is a conversational AI startup in Boston. So we are based in the United States, but we are the research branch in Trento. And now I'm going to tell you a bit my experience with the artificial intelligence systems development. When I started, there was this course didn't exist. So uh, basically, I did my bachelor. I finished my bachelor in 2014. And in... Um, and I started my master in computer science with focus in data science. However, um, at that time, uh, it was mostly specific for data science and that gave me very good like uh, basics and for machine learning, how to manage data, algorithms for data mining. But uh, when I started the course, I had the chance to take a course in natural, natural language understanding systems. And there I learned uh, and I had the chance to develop systems that actually are supposed to interact with humans in a natural conversation. And for, my, for me, that was really very challenging. And always I was being very intrigued by the idea of a machine that can sp speak to a human. And for that reason, I, sp I spent one year more in, uh, in a research lab in University of Trento managed by Professor Riccardi, where I could actually learn more, dig deeper, and you will not need to do this one year more because you will have already a course for this, which is uh, the course introduced by Professor Palopoli. And also at University of Trento with Professor Riccardi, we have been in the top 10 universities selected for an international challenge by Amazon. That was called uh, Alexa Prize, where a system was supposed to engage in an open domain conversation 
a user. So it was a very challenging task. And beyond just the machine learning and the statistical analysis, we had also to develop all the engineering because in uh, developing artificial intelligence systems, it's not just about applying a model and just look what has been in research, but how also it applies to your specific task. And you have also to fit the issues to handle the challenges related to scalability, real-time system, because these will affect how user will interact and uh, how uh, people uh, will experience it and also how your system will handle the real world uh, scenario. Uh, as I said, artificial intelligence is, uh, has been very important and I took a bit more time because it requires also engineering on top of machine learning and the application of it to a real use case scenario when there are real users interacting with your system and it's, it's very often very hard to predict how they will interact and what will be the real behavior and how will you handle all that corner or edge cases that you would have never thought about and how well your system will generalize and be able to handle such cases. Opportunity-wise, um, the artificial intelligence uh, is considered one of the most growing as of now. And what does it mean in practice? That there will be a lot of opportunities for, for startups and for, the, for a career, but also that there will be more competition. That's why it's also important to invest on the preparation and follow a very uh, complete course that will help you to have a clear understanding and good basic foundations of it. Uh, because it will be really important to be ready to the competition that might be out there. And uh, well, that's most, uh, that's my basic presentation. So. Okay, very uh, many thanks for being very, very tight on schedule. So thank you very much also for reporting your experience. And now I can leave the floor to my colleague Enrico Domenici. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen here. Okay, I am Enrico Domenici. I'm professor at the Cibio department, that is the um, Center for Computational Integrative and Cellular Biology at the University of Trento. And today I'm presenting a new master, a kind of recent master, which we started back in 2016, almost four years ago. And um, this is actually in response, if you wish, to the uh, huge demand for new type of scientists and researcher by the uh, recent evolution, the explosion, I would say, of uh, um, big data. And actually this big data has Im have impacted a lot also in, in, uh, in biology. Actually, uh, we are really uh, witnessing a, a sort of a huge demand for a completely new generation of scientists. So, and biology is going digital, we tend to say nowadays. And this has actually also created a, a, a real explosion of careers in this domain in computational biology in informatics. And we realized um, five years ago that we have actually huge um, skill set in this area. We have expertise. We have already uh, collaborated in the domain of computational biology across different departments, and in particular, the, uh, my department, uh, the uh, CIBIO, the uh, Department of Physics, the Department of Mathematics, of Information, uh, DZ. And uh, therefore, we put together this interdepartmental course, which is, we call it now uh, QCB. And uh, what we're trying to do is to extract information from big data and try to transform this information in what we call knowledge, actionable knowledge. And uh, the underlying uh, theme here is that we are trying to approach this with fully quantitative insights and we apply in biomathematical and biophysical models. So I think this is something which makes this kind of master somehow different from other uh, more simple uh, bioinformatic master of science. The second aspect is that we are actually enrolling uh, students from different 
uh, type of backgrounds, which will include uh, from biotechnology, from computational domain like uh, computer science, mathematics, and also physics and bioinformatics. Actually, some uh, bachelor in bioinformatics is actually uh, coming up, and therefore we have two, we have four different type of tracks which will accommodate the different uh, type of skills, and then we try to blend all the skills of the students into a unique, um, a unique uh, program. We have a number of uh, uh, mandatory uh, courses and a number of elective and free choice courses. I'm uh, showing here uh, what is actually a, a, a prototypical uh, um, uh, program for the, in particular for the computational track, which will include students from computer science and from uh, mathematic background. And as you can see here, there are a number of um, uh, exam or uh, courses which are aimed at uh, uh, completing or filling somehow the gaps that this type of students have in the area of biology and corroborating the knowledge in the space of mathematical model applied to the biology. And next, all students, they have the possibility of choosing different kind of electives. We have a very wide educational offer here, which spans from um, uh, genomics and application in biophysics, application in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and statistical models. So based on the type of profile that each student is able to choose, in the end, you're going to actually have the possibility, including a, a very important aspect, which is the internship period. And I must say that we have actually an ample cho uh, choice for internship, not only at the level of the four contributing departments, but also a number of uh, research center and foundation, which are nearby, including, for instance, the uh, uh, Fondation uh, Bruno Kessler, the uh, CNR Institute, uh, the Fondation Edmund Mach, and the uh, Center for Computational Synthesis Biology at Rovereto. This is actually sort of completing the profile together with the elective and will make students uh, uh, with different type of profile at exit, which will span from uh, data and systems biology uh, analysts, computer, uh, computational biologists, bioinformatician, and uh, uh, more standard biotechnology with a high level of computing uh, skills. So this is actually our um, uh, homepage. You can find a lot of information at this um, website, but we thought that probably some more information could be provided by our testimonial. So uh, we have uh, today uh, Germana Baldi, and Germana Baldi is actually uh, working at the European Bioinformatics Institute at Cambridge. Germana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor, for the brief introduction. And yeah, as he already told you, uh, I am Germana Baldi, and at the moment I am working as a bioinformatician and developer at Embu EBI in Cambridge. I started from University of Trento though, and I first graduated in computer science, and then I moved to a master in quantitative and computational biology. And again, I was asked today to carry my experience here, and I thought about it, and, uh, and I think that apart from the background knowledge which is provided by the QCB courses, uh, what makes the degree in QCB different from a degree in computer scientist, science is, an, is a set of factors that are strictly intertwined among them. And, but I guess that a crucial starting point for you guys is understanding maybe the use you want to have, you want to do uh, with your background knowledge in computer science. Because surely many of you will follow uh, the same path and go on with a computer science master. But others may want to um, apply their knowledge in another field and maybe developing programs and algorithms uh, as a mean to analyze an enormous amount of data and extract maybe new information. And it's, I guess it's totally fine not to have clear ideas by now because entering a new field such as biology, it's huge. And uh, biology again is a vast field and it's not uh, common to have a computer scientist uh, knowing uh, 
terms and concepts from the biological field, such as uh, metabolomics or metatranscriptomics, uh, or I don't know how um, how comfortable are you with the uh, with the development of mathematical models in order to understand how biological system uh, evolute in time. Or again, I don't know how comfortable are you with the structure of proteins and protein folding and stuff. And it's it's totally fair. I mean, <laughs> this is what a common feeling we had among our course mates. And we just knew that we wanted to deepen our knowledge in the biological field, but we really needed a new where to start from. And I guess this is also something peculiar about the QCD degree because uh, you, you maybe don't know where to start, but uh, once you've decided where to go, uh, it allows you to do that. And I wanted to make you a simple example because uh, in the year I, I first enrolled in the QCD course, uh, there were 20, 25 people and three of us were computer scientists. And none of, the, none of us really knew what we were going up to. And uh, we ended up uh, doing completely different things because, for example, I have been specializing on computational metagenomics applied to bacteria, and which basically means I try to understand uh, which bacteria, how many bacteria, and their role uh, depending on the environment we are looking at. And there is another guy who is at the moment in Germany, and he's focusing on animal metabolism uh, and studying through computational models, which directly translates to studying graphs and hypergraphs integrated with a huge amount of metadata. And the third guy instead is actually focusing on uh, graphical models and pro of protein structures and about understanding how the structure of a protein changes uh, by the time it interacts with another protein or a molecule or chemical components, drugs, and a lot of stuff. And um, I guess this, this example might make you realize that there isn't a real limit to what you can become if you want to enter the biological field. And I would say that if you're interested in, in, interested in deepening your knowledge of the biological field, the mastering QCB is a good way to go. And uh, I guess that's it. So, and thanks for your time and uh, for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to write me an email at germana.baldi at gmail.com. But I guess we will come back to this uh, in the QA, Q&A session if anyone wants to come up with something. And I <laughs> give the field back to Enrico Domenici. Thank you Thank for you. your attention. Thank you very much, Germana, for bringing up your very nice experience. And so it's time to uh, give the floor to Andrea uh, Passerini, who is going to present data science, I guess. Andrea. Okay, okay, yeah, thanks Enrico. Let me share my screen also. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm uh, the delegate of DISI for uh, data science. This is uh, again an interdepartmental uh, master of science and it involves uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, um, uh, departments in the university, uh, apart from DISI, uh, industrial engineering, whoops, um, uh, sociology, uh, mathematics, economics, psychology, and because the idea here is that um, uh, at least in, in, in the version that we have here in Trento, we are really thinking about a, a master of science that is uh, strongly uh, uh, transdisciplinary. Okay, so the idea is that uh, the starting point is that the data scientist is supposed to have uh, a very, let's say, interdisciplinary um, uh, competence and uh, being able to really talk uh, on the one side with the technicians, with the specialists of the solutions, okay, computer scientists, uh, mathematicians, statistic statisticians, and on the other hand, to talk with the um, policymakers, people in industry, people that really have the problems to be solved, in order to to okay to build to, to be as a bridge between these two uh, uh, parts that often has kind of problems to speak to each other. 
Um, uh, now, the idea this means that in order to do that, data scientists should be able to uh, um, master or, to, or at least be familiar with uh, 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 quite different um, uh, disciplines from uh, computer science <clears throat> for the technical part to mathematics and statistics also for the formalization of the models uh, and uh, let's say combined uh, uh, topics like machine learning come out of you know, combinations of these uh, competencies, but also um, uh, domain expertise and uh, ability to really understand uh, uh, how people think about problems, uh, uh, so social uh, competencies, uh, cognitive competencies, cognitive science, business, strategy, okay, also communication, all these kind of uh, let's say expertise which are less uh, uh, technical from the uh, point of view of uh, let's say the computational skills or the skills, the, 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 the modeling skills, but more uh, uh, skills that are useful in order to understand the domain and what you try to solve. Okay, so this is, you know, if you want, uh, pretty ambitious because we are talking about quite different competencies. Okay, um, and so the idea is that the students of this uh, Master of Science come from quite different backgrounds. Uh, indeed, uh, here we uh, have some access requirements. Uh, there have to be some requirements uh, uh, that you know, give you a little bit the idea of uh, uh, the, the familiarity that you should have at least uh, a, a basic familiarity with these topics. So uh, we require six credits in computer science, six in uh, social, psychological sciences, law or economics, one of these, uh, and six in mathematics statistics, okay? In order to have at least uh, a basic familiarity with these uh, uh, aspects, uh, I guess that for the audience today, uh, uh, the one that is, let's say, less obvious is the, the one in social, psychological uh, sciences, law and economics. Um, uh, and then uh, you need to have four, 24 additional credits in, uh, in one of these uh, and uh, in English language, language at P2. And also in terms of, let's say, uh, required skills, not curricular skills, uh, uh, we expect, uh, let's say, the successful uh, uh, student of this uh, um, degree to have uh, ability to analyze uh, social computer science topics, to um, uh, be flexible in thinking about solutions for problems and also, and this is kind of an experience uh, over these years, to have uh, already uh, reasonable programming skills. Um, uh, further, what happens if I don't have uh, uh, all of these requirements, which is uh, uh, likely or possible given this kind of you know, transdisciplinarity of the uh, um, proposal. Well, uh, uh, the, the, let's say the most recommended, if you uh, if you start uh, well in time, is to take uh, some uh, elect, uh, some free courses, uh, some uh, uh, um, elective courses during your um, last year. Um, uh, but you can also take seminars. There are seminars. Uh, uh, shorter seminars, three credits, and also uh, uh, um, as a, in a sense, um, uh, the final, uh, the, the, the closest to the start of the, uh, of the first term is uh, summer school, which is two intensive weeks of uh, <clears throat> made out of modules for programming, for social sciences, uh, so that uh, the candidate can take the modules that is needed in order to uh, fulfill the requirements. Okay, and this is typically organized uh, uh, around the end of July, beginning of August. Um, okay, now again, given uh, this kind of uh, uh, transdisciplinarity, uh, a little bit, uh, just a slide about the organization of the course, because the idea here is that you don't want to go into detail and you don't have to look at the detail, but the idea is that, uh, uh, that there, there are a kind of two tracks, one for uh, students that have a background in computer science, mathematics, engineering, uh, and one uh, for students that have a background in social sciences, economics, uh, psychology. And uh, you will have uh, basically some bridge courses that are separate for each of the two track in order to uh, fill the gaps if you want. And then you have some shared courses, the one you see in the, 
in the middle that give you, you know, the, 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 the basic uh, ingredients for uh, starting to think about data science. And then in second year, you have, uh, a, let's say, a bunch of restricted choice courses uh, among which you can choose uh, your, uh, your plan. We have uh, some, uh, let's say, um, suggested study plans as examples, basically what you can do. This is again, a very transdisciplinary, so there is quite some freedom, but we have examples of what you can do in order to end up having a certain type of, uh, let's say, uh, um, deeper uh, expertise, okay? Sorry, Andrea, uh, yeah. okay. It's time to, to leave the floor to the tes testimonial. So ah, yes, okay, that's okay. it. I, I, I won't go into the professional profiles, but I'd rather um, uh, leave the floor to the testimonial. Um, uh, well, we don't have uh, uh, anybody um, from this uh, degree just because uh, 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 the first uh, people who graduated graduated a month ago. So we have uh, instead uh, uh, Mattia Zeni, who is a student, an ex-student of DZ, but he has been working, he's, he's working on data science. And so he can, I guess he can give you quite a good overview of what working in data science means. So Mattia. Yeah, uh, thanks Andrea. Uh, and thanks for the invitation. Um, yeah, so I'm Mattia Zeni and uh, I studied in Unitian. So I did bachelor and master actually in telecommunications engineering. Um, and then for the PhD, I switched to computer science. And we can say that uh, the goal of the, I mean, the direction of the PhD was basically on data science. So I, I was working with uh, huge amounts of data, big data. So that's, uh, yeah, that's where, where I come from. Um, and then after the PhD, I did one year of postdoc, uh, again at the University of Trento. And then I moved to the dark side, which is the industry. Uh, specifically, um, at the moment, I'm a senior data scientist in TomTom, so the navigation company. I bet the people who have more than 30 years in this call know it. The others, I'm not sure. Um, so actually, I joined TomTom Tom last year as a R&D engineer because I was coming from research. Uh, but then I decided to switch to data scientist. So I, I decided to switch role and change team because uh, I think it's, I mean, that's where, that's the, the sexiest, sexiest job of these times, right? And uh, also, my company has huge amounts of data, and this is really um something that uh, i wanted to jump in because uh, I, I, we can really do i can really do with in this position uh, amazing things so we have a uh, a lot of for example a lot of um connected cars so i think the counter at the moment is like 800 millions that send send us data in real time so we can really study a lot of things uh, traffic um, mobility patterns so it's it's really really interesting um and yeah so data scientists it, the role is not clear even today nowadays so there are one million different uh, uh i would say differences in, in in the job so you basically you have so if you if you see data scientists then you don't know what you're, you're going to do then you have to check the job description if you want to to know for sure because it's it's a mixture of uh, software engineering so if you're more on the data engineering side uh, I need to code some system to crunch data, or there is the more the really data scientist part where you have to do analysis for stakeholders in the company, like business people, or you have to present to other scientists and uh, and go to a conference. So as Andrea said, it's a very it's a very broad um, field. You have to to know a lot of skills, and that's why I believe it's very interesting. So I get bored to do one single thing every day um so yeah this is a bit the job um so maybe about the university so i think so as andrea said i didn't do the, the the master in data science but i think the university of Trent is a very good university um because so there are different reasons so one is um, the international focus the university has uh, and the network you can create there so for example, in my, in my case, I did an internship at IBM Research in Kenya. And that was, again, very, very interesting. 
um, to get to know a company for the first time. Um, yeah, and then if if you want to know some advices about how to what to do during the university time, I believe. So of course the basic um, I would say courses like mathematics, statistics, those are very important. They are fundamental. But don't forget to also put a lot of effort in the, the additional ones, the, the one that make you become a, like a domain expert or um, that let you build some domain knowledge that you in the end need for your job. Because in my case, I, for my PhD, I was working with location data. I've been working for four years. And then when I landed in TomTom, so first of all, he tell me land there because I somehow uh, know already what to do. And then, I mean, it, it's really it's really important to to know already to be a domain expert in something because it's it's in, in the end it's much easier for you. Um, okay, yeah. uh, Mattia, I think that's thanks a lot. I think uh, we are at the end of our time. So very good. I think it gave quite a good overview of what uh, is to be, ex to be expected after. So let's uh, leave the floor to Professor Zancanaro for human computer interaction. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Andrea. And uh, I will present you the last uh, uh, program of today, the uh, Master de Laura Magistrale in Human Computer Interaction. My name is Massimo Zancanaro. I'm a professor uh, in computer science, uh, but uh, I'm affiliated with the Department of Psychology and Computer Science. Uh, let me first briefly introduce human computer interaction. Uh, it's a branch of computer science which is focused on the design, evaluation, implementation of digital technologies for human use. Since its beginning in the, in the 70s, probably, uh, it's always been a highly interdisciplinary field. Uh, of course, it's part of computer science, so this is the basic knowledge, but it's also uh, acquired and used uh, methods from uh, and, and concepts from psychology, sociology, design, so on. So this is why we decided to uh, ground this program as a, a truly interdepartmental master program uh, in the Department of Cognitive Science in Rovereto and also in the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science in Bolton. Uh, this allows students to have access to facilities and labs of both departments and just to uh, double the opportunities for, for internship thesis, but also for projects. Uh, of course, the, uh, the two, uh, as you probably know, most of you are from, from Dizzy, from Povo. Uh, as you know, the, the two sites are, uh, are a little bit apart. Uh, but in the teaching schedules for both computer and elective courses, consider the family needs. So you will spend a few days in Rovereto, a few days in Povo. And so you cannot have a, a limited uh, noise, but uh, increase your opportunities. What are uh, the objectives, or the main objective of the master? Is to train a, a new generation of researchers and professionals, which is able to understand the complexity of human cognition, uh, human behavior, and emotion and be able at the same time to embed this knowledge in the design of computing artifacts and technology. Uh, in the, in, because the importance of the relation with technology with human is, all, is in these days even more important than ever. Uh, we, this, we, we, we build our offer in, uh, by putting in particular attention to some uh, core of the discipline of ACI. So we teach a uh, quantitative ergonomic participatory design prototyping, but also we offer the possibility of uh, deepening your understanding by offering uh, electives in visual design, not all um, expert of human computer technology or uh, user experience, if you prefer in a more modern buzzword, are act should actually be expert in visual design. Uh, but uh, I've seen that this could be an interesting path to, to push you, but also what I think is even more important today, the design epistemology and ethics. Then we have uh, some compulsory courses on the focus of these two main uh, stance of methodology that are uh, common in, in the discipline, both the qualitative and the quantitative. And then we have an area of social interaction, which is uh, a typical from psychology 
but with a, a specific perspective on the design of interactive system. Uh, similar for uh, the brain computer interaction and the multimodality, in which we can offer some uh, basic understanding for uh, in the compulsory courses, and then you can choose which path uh, you want to uh, pursue. Of course, you have uh, 12 free credits uh, that you can uh, use uh, freely on for whichever course at the University of Trento. And uh, this, uh, again, allows you to personalize uh, your experience. Then uh, we decided to leave a, a, a humble space for internship and thesis. Basically, you have the entire last semester, the second semester, the second year, is entirely free for uh, internship and thesis uh, in order to do a, a very deep professional research experience. Uh, uh, we also uh, encourage our students to take uh, uh, exchange programs, uh, Erasmus mainly, but there are also other bilateral programs. In particular, we have some exchange agreements with the University of the Technologie de Troyes in France, near Paris, the Endoven University, the Applied Science University in Upper Austria, and the University of Siegen, that are uh, very well known and famous sites where to study uh, human computer interaction in Europe. Uh, our courses started uh, uh, not many years ago, and uh, so we don't yet have data on satisfaction and employment uh, from uh, official data from our laurea, but most of our students already work around Europe. And uh, we decided to have a maximum of 30 students, and uh, we had an increase in application and, of course, in enrollment as a consequence. Uh, this year, we actually reached our uh, maximum. So we have uh, uh, over 80 applications, and uh, uh, we have all the 30 uh, seats taken. Uh, but we still we will live uh, at least for a few years more this uh, a maximum number because uh, we want to have a, a program uh, with based on project, uh, which is focused on project-based learning. And so we want to uh, our students involved in real projects uh, across courses and uh, also to going out on the field. Uh, this is uh, the end for my presentation. Uh, of course, you can find further information there. Uh, also, you can check our page. Page. It's an official page, so you don't have a lot of uh, uh, information, but I mean, a lot of uh, rumors, but mostly uh, official information. Of course, you are free to uh, send me an email uh, if you need further information. And I would now leave the floor uh, to sorry, uh, to our testimonial, uh, Elena Gabrielli. Uh, she was one of our first uh, graduates in the, the second. Uh, uh, cohort, I think, and uh, uh, she's working in a e-bank uh, software uh, company. Idenia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Professor, for the brief introduction. And um, I try to share my screen. Let's see if I can. I guess uh, you can see my presentation, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm Ilenia Gabrielli and uh, I am an ex student of the Human Computer Interaction Master course. I graduated in 2018 and now I'm working for a big software house in Trento for two years, uh, uh, more or less. Today, I'm here to talk about my job um, and my experience as a UX designer and uh, how the course helped me in this path. So, uh, what do I do? I should say that my everyday duties are quite different from one to another. First of all, I do research on the target users. So I collect the relevant data and uh, analyze them in order to understand our users' need. Secondly, I follow the new project's development starting from the very beginning of the design phase. So based on the data, there is the creation of the wireframe that uh, gradually is going to consolidate into a prototype that finally can be tested with the real users. 
and uh, after this design phase, it's also too important to keep follow the project in all the following developmental stages. So until its uh, concrete realization and release. In order to achieve this goal, I need to cooperate uh, in a really big team made of course by different people with different roles. There are uh, indeed uh, the project manager, UI designers, and uh, front-end and back-end developers. Therefore, one of my important duties is also to act uh, as a bridge, we can say, uh, between all these different parts of the team and make sure that uh, they understand each other, speak in the same language some way, and uh, avoid the conflicts generated by the really different point of view that they can have. So how uh, the human computer interaction course helped me with all these duties? What I've learned or even better, what you will learn from that? Uh, certainly the course gave me and consolidated many practical skills. I learned the different uh, research techniques, uh, data analysis techniques, and uh, of course also the basic UX and UI technical competences. But uh, it will also teach you some different soft skill uh, that I found essential in my, in my everyday uh, tasks. First of all, is the flexibility. You will follow many course uh, with a common topic, but uh, which are very different one to another. So you will have to push yourself uh, in the exploration of different uh, areas of the human computer interaction. And you will have to do this in a very practical way with a lot of project and uh, field research. And this great uh, variance uh, will help you to develop a strong uh, multidisciplinary thinking that uh, I can assure you that is a very, very important thing in this kind of job. And uh, you will also be immersed in a strongly multicultural context. You will meet people from different countries, but uh, also from different backgrounds. And sometimes they will be very far from yours. This uh, will push you to really test yourself and learn to collaborate uh, to reach a common goal, even if you speak uh, different uh, language. And uh, in this case, we can say in all the sense. And um, I need to admit that uh, this was difficult, at least for me it was difficult, but, uh, but I can, um, if you can overcome this, uh, I can assure you that uh, you will find the real world job as a natural extension of your university career. And um, I think that uh, at the end, uh, it is the most important important thing that uh, an university course can give to you. So I think uh, that's all. Uh, I want to thank you all for the attention and uh, also the university and Professor Zancanaro for the invite. I left you my email, email that you can read on the slide if you have some question or curiosity. And uh, nothing, I thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Perry. You're welcome. And very clear. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, I think that uh, this is uh, we finish.